Hi everyone. Um, in this lecture, we'll try to understand what happens when I connect two inductors in series. In this way, where one inductor is already carrying an initial current I, then how does this circuit behave in the steady state? What will be the initial energy and final energy in this circuit? Now, before I solve this problem, I'll solve a more well-known problem. Um, which is something that most of the VLS engineers would encounter and even in digital circuits as well. It's called the problem of charge sharing. So where you have two capacitors C1 and C2 and the capacitor C1 has an initial condition as an initial voltage V1, V or initial charge of C1 into V stored across it. And suddenly at T equal to zero, the switch is closed. Now I'll quickly review this problem. And then we will try to do a similar analysis to a problem com comprising of inductors. Now to analyze this problem, I will quickly, uh, once the switch is closed, then uh, the circuit would reduce to something like this, where you have two capacitors C1 and C2 in parallel. The voltage across both the capacitors will be forced to be equal after that's, uh, that's, uh, that's after T greater than 0. So now what I'll do is I'll just write KCL at this node, Kirchhoff's current law. So then the sum of the two currents is zero. The sum of the current, the current through capacitor C1 is C1 dV by dt. And the current through capacitor C2 is C2 dV by dt. I'll slightly modify this and write this as D of C1 plus C2 into V by dt. Now this term C1 plus C2 into V is the total charge in the system. So that I've written it, written it as QT as the total charge. Now this equation tells us a very interesting thing. It tells us the, the rate of change of charge is zero. The total charge is zero. Which means the charge before the switch was closed and the charge after the switch is closed is the same. So this is, this is an outcome of uh, this equation because I'm, I'm, the rate of change is zero. So which means the charge is continuous at zero. So whatever charge was present before the switch was closed should be the same as the charge that is present after the switch is closed. Again, so this is uh, what we call the conservation of charge. So from this conservation of charge, we can directly write this equation. C when V was the charge present in the capacitor or in the system before the switch was closed. After the switch is closed, the charge will be C1 plus C2 into V dash. So from this, we can find the steady state voltage after the switch was closed. So which is C1 by C1 plus C2 into V. Now this is a well-known result. I'll further simplify this and assume C1 and C2 are same and equal to C. In that case, the final voltage will be V by 2. Now, the initial energy that, that was present in the circuit in the system is half into Cv squared. So, only one capacitor had a voltage stored across it, so which, which means the other capacitor had 0 volts across it. So, therefore, the energy of the second capacitor, so we had two capacitors before the switch was closed. The second capacitor had no charge. The first capacitor had some charge stored across it and uh, rather the voltage across it was V, it was charged to a voltage V. So therefore, the energy stored in this capacitor was half CV square and this was zero. So the total energy before the switch was closed was half CV square. Now after the switch is closed, so this is the steady state attained after the switch being closed. In that case, we have a voltage of V by two across both the capacitors. So the total energy in the, after the switch is closed will be 1 by 4 Cv square. Now if you see here, we said the charge is conserved, but then the energy after the switch is closed and before the switch is closed are different. It means the energy here is not conserved. So the energy that is lost or rather the, which is not accounted for is 1 by 4 Cv square which means where did this remaining 1 by 4 Cv squared go? So the energy that is present in the system after the switch is closed is 1 by 4 Cv squared. Before the switch was closed, the energy is 1 by uh, 1 half of Cv squared. So then where did this remaining 1 by 4 Cv squared energy go? Now some textbooks do get it wrong. Um, they are attributed to radiation. They say that this energy is radiated away from the circuit. That's not necessarily, I mean, that's not true. Uh, generally, it's not true. In fact, we can easily account for that loss of energy as a thermal loss in the switch. 
even if the switch resistance is zero, we will now show that it will still have a finite loss and the, there will be still a finite loss in the system. And that loss will exactly be equal to 1 by 4 CV square. Now I have already analyzed this circuit, I will give the uh, analysis part in the description. But you can very easily derive a simple, uh, you can simply solve this equation in time domain and you can get, even intuitively we can guess the results. But I will uh, give the voltages V1 and V2 across these two capacitors. Now the voltages will not be same because the switch resistance is introduced. So the voltages V1 and V2 will not be the same. Now the voltage V1 that is the voltage across this capacitor will start at V and in the steady state it is eventually going to reach V by 2. So we know that in the steady state since these capacitors will become like behave like open circuits and there will be no current DC current flowing in the circuit. So therefore the voltage drop across the switch resistance R as W will be 0. So the voltage across both the capacitors will come to V by 2. So now the voltage across the first capacitor so that is it starts at V but it eventually decays down to V by 2. Now in case of the second capacitor it starts at 0 and slowly gets charged to V by 2. So the second capacitor is gaining charge the first capacitor is losing some charge. Okay, So the total charge that is transferred from the first capacitor to the second capacitor is C V by 2. This capacitor, so the first capacitor had a charge of CV stored across it, out of which half of the charge was transferred to the other capacitor. Now since the first capacitor lots lost CV by 2, the charge across the first capacitor also comes down to CV by 2. And now everything is accounted for. Had there been no resistor, I mean had that the resistance of the switch was 0, if the switch resistance was 0 then this charge transfer would have happened instantaneously. Okay, So what I have shown here, um, if the, I mean the circuit is now because of the finite switch resistance, there is going to be some time constants associated with the circuit. The time constant because I mean it's uh, there are only two capacitors and there is only one path for the current to flow and uh, so it will behave like a first order system. So we can simply multiply the resistance into the equivalent capacitance so which will be C by 2. So we get time constant as R switch into C by 2. So then I can write the expression this way. It is uh, at t equal to 0 this value will be V. At t equal to infinity it will reduce to V by 2. Similarly the second equation will be like a first order charging. So it is initial value is 0 and it eventually charges to V by 2. The voltage across the resistor is nothing but the difference between the voltage across the two capacitors. That will be simply V e power minus of t upon tau. Now the power dissipated across the resistor is V square by R, the instantaneous power. So we can directly write it as V square by R switch into e power minus of 2t tau, 2 t by tau into u of t. Actually uh, we can write this expression in a more intuitive way. So we can multiply and divide, I am going to multiply and divide it by C by 2. So you will get C V square by 2 into 1 by R switch into C by 2. Now this term I am going to further reduce. So this, this R switch into C by 2 will see is simply your time constant. I am further going to multiply this by tau by 2 and so this will become C V square by 4. So the power now can be written in this way. So I have the reason why I have written it as tau by 2 is that um, if you evaluate this integral, the area of this integral will simply be the value of this integral from 0 to infinity will simply be equal to 1. Uh, there is a reason why I wrote it like that. So we will in a few moments it will become very clear why did I write it that way. So I have written it as I have written it, written it in this format and now what I am going to do is that uh, this is the instantaneous power dissipated across the circuit, across the resistor. So if you see the voltage across the resistor decays down with a time constant tau. So it starts at V and it goes down to 0. The power on the other hand starts from a value of Cv squared by 4. Uh, of course there is 1 by tau as well. 
um, in fact tau by 2 is there here and then it decays down to 0 with a slope with a time constant of tau by 2 power decays faster so now if you quickly integrate this as I said the value of this integral if I integrate this I'm going to get energy so that's the total energy lost across the resistor that's obtained by integrating the power dissipated across the resistor so you're going to get if I integrate this I'll just I've, read, I've written the integral here but uh, you can directly integrate this term itself and as I said the value of this term is simply 1 so you will get the value of this integral to be equal to cv squared by 4. So this result if you look at it it's, it's the, there is an interesting consequence here it says that the energy lost across the resistor is independent of the switch resistance and that is always equal to 1 by 4 cv squared. So this is where the energy is lost it's lost as the thermal loss across the resistor as an i square r loss I'll just show a little bit of mathematics what, ha what happens in the event um, when the switch resistance becomes equal to 0. So here um, I've just shown it pictorially uh, what happens to the energy in the resistance the energy is energy loss in the resistor eventually approaches a value of half 1 by 4 cv square. Now what happens when R switch tends to 0? When R switch tends to 0, the time constant of the circuit tends to 0. Which means, if you look at the expression for power, I had already written the power expression in this way, which is, which is what I have shown here. Now, if you look at this expression here, as time constant tends to 0, the numerator will tend to 0 because it is e power minus infinity, it will go to 0 and denominator also goes to 0. Now this is a function, so that it's, it's an exponential function. The width of this function, if your time constant is large, it's going to decay down slower. The time constant is lower, it's going to decay down faster. But the thing is that the amplitude of this function increases with reducing time constant. So it reminds us of a delta function. So in the limit when tau tends to 0, so I mean if you have uh, recalled one of my previous lectures, I say how to construct a delta function. It can be constructed using Gaussian functions uh, with diminishing variance. It can be constructed by functions like this, you know, you, you take a square pulse of uh, with delta and amplitude 1 by delta, the area is always equal to 1. The same way, if you see an exponential function with a time constant tau, then 1 by tau e power minus t by tau, the area is always equal to 1. The integral, if you integrate this from 0 to infinity, you will always get it as 1. But the amplitude when tau tends to 0 will blow up to infinity. So therefore, this function will approach an impulse function. So that satisfies the definition of an impulse. The definition of an impulse is that at t equal to 0, it, it's, the value is really large, approaches infinity. But it always integrates, integrates out to a finite value. So this exponential function converges to an in, impulse function. And the limiting case when time constant tends to 0. So therefore the power dissipated across the resistor happens to be an impulse. So it will be cv squared by 4 into delta of t. So there will be an impulse of power suddenly lost across the resistor. So therefore the energy lost across the resistor will be a step. There will be a sudden step change of energy loss across the resistor. So this is where the energy is lost. So if you have two capacitors, I'll just quickly summarize what happened. Where the first capacitor is stored a voltage V across it. The instant the switch is closed, the charge transfer because now the two capacitors are forced to have same voltage across them. This capacitor is suddenly is supposed to be charged and this capacitor is suddenly losing its charge. So charge transfer is going to take place but that charge transfer takes place instantaneously in no time. The total charge that is transferred is uh, we discussed it is Cv by 2 from this capacitor and this charge is transferred instantaneously at no time. So therefore the charge will be an impulse or the current will actually be in the, the circuit will actually be an impulse. So you will have an impulse of current flowing in the circuit. And this impulse of current, even though it's flowing through a zero switch resistance, will end up dissipating a finite 
an impulse of power and therefore will end up dissipating a finite energy. So that's where the energy is lost in this system. So it's purely a thermal loss in the switch. Now we will apply a similar analysis to an inductor circuit. So wherein we have two inductors connected in series. The first inductor, uh, this uh, connected in series, there is a switch in between and the switch closes at t equal to 0 and this inductor L1 already has an initial current I flowing across it. Now in a similar way, the way we had carried out the analysis for a capacitive circuit, we will carry out a similar analysis here and I am going to ignore mutual inductances um, between the two inductors. So then in that case, eventually you will have once the switch is closed, so before the switch was closed, uh, this inductor L1 was the flux of this inductor L1 is L1 into I. The flux is simply the product of self inductance into the current flowing through that. And the energy stored across this, across, I mean uh, energy stored in the inductor is the magnetic energy which was half L1 I square. Now at t equal to 0 plus the switch is closed. The moment the switch is closed, now the circuit is going to attain a new steady state. Let the new current that's because both the inductors are in series, both the inductors have to carry the same currents. So I will assume the new current flowing in the circuit as I dash. So then L1, so we can directly see, I have just uh, written it this way, I have redrawn the circuit this way. So the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across this is 0. So I will simply write it as L1 di1 plus L2 di2, so which is nothing but L1 i1 plus L2 i2 or L1 plus L2 because the currents are same in both the inductors uh, at t equal to 0 plus it will be L1 plus L2 into I dash. This is your total flux in the circuit in the inductor circuit. So it will be d phi t by dt equals 0. Now here we get an interesting result. We have, it's similar to what we got in the capacitive circuit. We got that the total charge is the rate of change of charge was 0. So which means the charge was conserved. Before the switch was closed and after the switch was closed, the charge was the same. The same way, here now we get flux being conserved in this inductive circuit. Now before the switch is closed, phi of 0 minus the flux is L1 into I. After the switch is closed, it will be L1 plus L2 into I dash. So now equate the two, you get your current as I dash as L1 by L1 plus L2 into I. Now we will analyze a simpler case where both the inductors being equal and equal to L. In that case, the current after the system attains a steady state will be I dash equals I by 2. In a similar way, we will try to see what happened, flux as we said is conserved, but what happens to the energy? The energy stored in the inductor is half L I square initially. Now after the, in the steady state, once the switch is closed, the energy stored in the system or both the inductors is half L I by 2 whole square plus half L I by 2 whole square and that is equal to 1 fourth L I square. Now if you see energy is not conserved, meaning initially the initial energy is half L I square, the final energy in the system is 1 fourth L I square. So then where did the remaining 1 by 4 L I square energy go? Now in a similar way to analyze this circuit, so in the previous circuit, um, I mean to just use some RF terms, uh, terms used in terminology used in radio frequency circuit design, I assume the capacitor had a finite Q. Similarly, I can here assume that the inductors have a finite Q. So I will model a finite resistance RP. So the reason why I am modeling a finite resistance RP is that if you look at the circuit, um, the circuit which is uh, let me read right here. So if I have an inductor L1 and another inductor L2 here, the moment I short circuit the switch, uh, short circuit the switch, the current I1 in this inductor is going to instantaneously flow into L2. Now we know that inductor currents cannot change instantaneously. Previously, in capacitors, similarly, we know that the capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously. By adding a finite switch resistance that condition was avoided. So it took a finite time constant and all of that uh, for the voltages to reach a steady state values. 
Similarly, if I put a resistor in series, that's really not going to help me. I mean, I mean, in case if I put a resistor in series, at t equal to 0 plus, suddenly this inductor is trying to force a current I into this inductor as well. And then I will be violating conservation of energy. The energy stored at 0 plus will be half L1 I square plus half L2 I square and that's going to be greater than half L1 I square. So which means the initial energy, the final energy is greater than the initial energy and that's going to violate energy conservation. It can be either less or equal. So that's why putting a resistor in series is not going to work here. So which is why I put a resistor in parallel here. The moment I put a resistor in parallel, um, we are now creating a path for the current to flow. Previously, the current had to flow in the inductor L2. So that's why we had this problem of uh, violating energy conservation. But now we have created a path. Suddenly when the switch is closed, the inductor L2 is going to act like an open circuit and it's going to stop current flowing through that and all the current will then flow end up flowing through RP. I can also say I'm going to model the losses in the inductor as a par resistance parallel with the inductor. Again, this is a reasonable approximation, a reasonable model. We can assume that the inductors have finite losses and then finally I'm going to assume that the losses are zero. So which means I'm going to assume RP is as, as infinity. And then I'm going to show that um, if you assume a finite RP this way and in the limiting case when RP tends to infinity, that this energy, the lost energy can be accounted for as a loss across the resistor RP. So in fact, um, you can easily see if you have studied basic circuit, circuit theory, courses on circuit theory, there is this concept called dual of a circuit. So if I have two capacitors and a resistor in between, uh, this circuit, in, uh, two inductors and a resistor in parallel between them uh, will be a dual circuit to this. So in a similar way, I'll assume that the current flowing through one, the first inductor L is I1 and the second cur current inductor L is I2, then I can very easily show, again this is something uh, it can be easily shown, um, I1 that's the current flowing through the inductor L in the steady state will become I by 2. That's what we discussed right now a few moments ago. Similarly, uh, again, uh, this should sound intuitive because even though there is a finite resistance RP, because in the steady state, the voltage across the circuit is only going to carry DC currents, the voltage across the inductors will come to zero. And because the voltage across the inductor comes to zero, the current through the resistor RP will go to zero. So the current will loop around this way. So even though there is a finite RP, uh, there will not be any losses in the steady state. Okay. So the current I1 across the inductor L starts from I, it starts from I and then it decays down to I by 2. So this is I1 of T. So it starts from I and decays down to I by 2. The current through I2 starts from 0 and it eventually grows to a final value of I by 2. So that's what, that's what I've written here. It starts from I and it eventually reaches a steady state of I by 2. And this will also start from 0 and it reaches a steady state of I by 2 uh, at t tends to, when t tends to infinity. And the time constant for this circuit will be Rp into the effective inductance which is, uh, sorry, uh, will be L upon, uh, L upon, uh, L effective upon Rp. So L effective in this case is L by 2. So that's what I've written here. Now the current flowing to the resistor Initially, all the current, when suddenly we close the switch, all the current from I L1 will flow through this resistance Rp. So it's going to be I and then eventually the current is going to go to 0. So that's what I've written here. So it is I e power minus T upon tau. So similarly, we can write the power dissipated across the resistor as I square R. So we'll have I square Rp into e power minus 2t upon tau d of t. In a similar way, I am going to write it in a form uh, which is which will which will be much easier to integrate. So, which is I am going to write this in this form. So, I will multiply and divide by L and then I can reduce this expression uh, this expression to something like this. So, I will have 1 fourth Li square into e power minus 2t 
2 t upon tau by tau by 2. Now this term as I had already discussed it integrates out to 1 from 0 to infinity if I integrate this function from 0 to infinity I am going to get 1 and this term also if, if tau tends to 0 this function will tend to be tend to an impulse. So now the power dissipated across the resistor can be written in this way so you have li squared by 4 into uh, the exponential term. Now the energy dissipated across the resistor er of t will be an exponential function and it eventually reaches a final value of 1 fourth li square. Now again if you look at the expression for energy here the steady state energy is independent energy lost in the resistor is independent of the resistance value and this 1 by 4 li square is exactly the energy that is lost in the system. So that loss can be captured by modeling the resistance rp in parallel. Now in the limiting case we will let rp tend to infinity we will get a similar condition where the power so here it is li square by 4 and this function which is tau by uh, which is actually e power minus 2t by tau divided by tau by 2 this function into u of t will tend to an impulse. So you will get something like this this will be your power and the energy lost is if you integrate this you will get the total energy lost across the resistor there will be a step a sudden loss in energy across the resistor. The value of that energy loss will be 1 by 4 li square. So this is what happens in the circuit. So if you have two inductors and you connect them in series instantly what actually happens is that there is a current which is set in the circuit. There is a current because this the current flowing through this circuit through this inductor is L and through this inductor uh, through this inductor L is I. The instant we close the switch, the instant we close the switch, the current in this inductor comes to I by 2 and this current also becomes I by 2. Now the total energy we said was 1 by 4 Li square. The energy, the remaining energy 1 by 4 Li square is actually lost in the process of charging this inductor and that we showed mathematically by assuming a finite parallel resistance rp and we said that energy is lost in this resistance rp. So if I, if I assume the resistance rp to be infinity even then there will be a finite loss and we can also see that for an inductor to build a current i suddenly the voltage across an inductor has to be an impulse. So the inductor here will develop an impulse of voltage across it and gain a current I by 2 and this inductor because the voltage is in the opposite direction the voltage developed is in the opposite direction to the direction of flow of current it is going to lose a current I by 2 by developing an impulse of voltage across it. So an inductor can build a current instantaneously provided the voltage across it is infinity. So if you suddenly change a current across an inductor you will notice a spike of a sudden voltage spike across the inductor. So if the inductor had a finite Q it would have been a uh, the voltage change would have looked like this it would have been an exponential change it, it would have decayed down exponentially like this but if the inductor is of infinite Q they are infinite Q inductors then what you will notice is an impulse change a sudden impulse change because of this impulse change even though the Q of the inductor is infinity, even though there is no parallel resistance, even though Rp is infinity, there will be some losses across this resistor. There will be mathematically you can show that there will be some losses across the resistor and this is where the energy is lost.